The following podcast is not real. But our meager, potentially violent fan base insists otherwise, so desultory, slipshod world building it is then. Enjoy the show and linger after the credits for an extended sneak peek at the ill advised Magic Tavern spin off podcast, Offices and Bosses. Available now at howl.fm slash magic. Hello from the Magic Tavern, a weekly podcast from the magical land of Foon. I'm your host, Arnie Niekamp. If you've never listened to the podcast before, this is what's going on. About a year and nine months ago, I fell through a dimensional portal behind a Burger King in Chicago into the magical, fantastical land of Foon. Luckily, I'm still getting a Wi-Fi signal, I'm sure, through that dimensional rift from that Burger King, and I use that to upload a podcast I record every week here in the tavern, the Vermilion Minotaur in the town of Hog's Face, in the land of Foon. And I'm joined, as always, by my buddies, by my boon companions, uh, Chunt the King of the Badgers. hey yo. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing, Arnie? I'm doing all right. It's weird. I haven't really talked about this. I think I had a good birthday, but I can't remember. Like, I don't know if I had too much to drink are you or fishing, something. Are you fishing for us to celebrate it again for you? I mean, no. No, because here's the other thing. The, all I do remember is that I have this general feeling that it was great. Mm. I have this like these warm feelings about it. And I, I sort of vaguely remember hanging out with a small magical creature, which I, mm. I'm guessing is you. So I'm guessing we had sure. a fun time on my birthday. Yeah, absolutely. How is and, and you your birthday as well? Yeah, I mean, my birthday shifts around, but yeah. Yeah. How many how many times a year do you have a birthday now? Oh boy, I don't I don't want to talk about birthday stuff. You don't want to talk about birthday. Although stuff? I'm excited to say, in in the new year, I'm trying to be a little more um, entrepreneurial, trying to to uh, make things happen. You know, not just talk, but do. Yeah. So I just opened up a new food cart, um, a Chuchu's Chow food cart. Oh wow. Um, we do exclusively sell um, butt soup on the street. It's like a street hmm. street cart or a food cart. And my friend uh, Petey, the the pussy cat, he sells the butt soup. So. Um, the title of it, the the name of it is uh, Butt Soup Pussycat. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. What but, is it called? Butt Soup Pussycat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Butt Soup Pussycat. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I got one for once. Hey, and I'm also joined by my good friend, Usador. Uh, I am Usador. I'm to the drunk brown little piece of your uh, manipulator of magical delights, a devourer of chaos, champion of the great halls of Tragus, the ills and the fiang, elect the doors of the zone and hooks, tang cheese, and I'm known in the northeast as Gaswinius May style, and there's a bunch of other names you don't know. Uh, look, you sort of what's I, going? I, you I rushed there. through that. Usually, you like l- like you just like make a meal out of every word. He's a wizard on a mission. Arnold, we have five weeks left until we leave upon mine quest. What's that? I am buying supplies. I am preparing the the the, the group caravan to set out. We only have a small amount of time left. W- why? Because that is the date that all of the stars align and tell me that it is best for us to set upon our way now that we have a full band of merrymakers and adventurers to defeat the Dark Lord together. So, Usador, you, what, you, what is happening in five weeks? We're leaving on the quest to go defeat the Dark Lord. Well, we've been talking about that for, like, a long time. You've been talking about it for a long time. I'm 300 years old! <laughs> Well, you know this what? is all I was brought into this world to do. You know what? You're right. Normally I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would do whatever I can. We would, we would not take it seriously. But I just feel weirdly refreshed after this last week. I've got renewed sense of energy and purpose. I guys, is this is this the year where we get serious? Guys, this is the year where we get serious. Boys year. Boys year. Boys year. Look, if there's ever a time of year where you just got to get a little momentum going, it's at the beginning. Let's get on this quest before the natural just like shit of the year just stops yeah. us from doing anything. Didn't you say this morning that you're going to work out every day now? Mm, yeah, I'm going to work out every day now. Great, let's start with that. Okay. We'll wait. To clarify, I've been serious since the beginning. Monday, Tuesday, Flern's Day. What are the rest of them? I'm truly trying to make out what every day of the 
year yeah. is. We wrote it down in your room. You have a calendar in your room. You know what? That reminds me. I had all of those little post-it notes someone sent through the portal for me, those little fun little post-it notes that I could write things down on, and they're, like, all gone now. Like, all my writing material is gone after last week. Oh, uh, uh, last week when you were having such a revelry for your birthday that you, were, you, you just wrote a bunch of notes and gave them out to people to say how much you liked them. It wasn't that somebody took those notes and did something more productive with them. Yeah, oh. you, you stuck a bunch to my fur. Uh-huh. That was a good time. What was, Chad, what was a nice note that I wrote for you? Um, one of them was like, uh, Lilas, which you told me means love you like a sister. Oh, that sounds like something love I would Love you say. like a sister. One was TTYL, um, which he said meant talk, talk, y'all listen, <laughs> which I didn't understand, but... Um, I still don't understand that one. Yeah, neither do I, really. Now, Chunt, Chunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, just, don't tell him that he was home. No, I'm not going to mention okay, it. Just, we just, agreed not to I mention just, it. Just don't mention it. I don't want to bum him out that he's stuck again. I know. I know. It's so Arnold. Yes? Five weeks left. All right, yeah, you know what? Let's just embrace it. Let's let's get prepared. Let's go on this quest before we second guess it, before some other stupid thing comes up and stops us. Five weeks from today. What stupid things have been popping up to stop us? Uh, literally every week something stupid pops up and stops us. What, like what? Like, um, hmm. You know what? Now I think about it. Think what the fuck has been stopping we've us? We've been in our own we've way. We've literally just been sitting here. We're doing it to ourselves. We have not done anything. I, I travel nearly every week looking for information and spells and setting my minions about to help me. I Even now, here, here let's, uh, why don't we check in with one of our most important questers right now? What? Here, here, hold on. This is what I was doing when I was over at the bar. I was getting this pool of still water. What? I see it's why a large bring- bowl. Yeah. It's a large bowl full of still water. Still. It is very still. Oh, but what if I just gently? It's still water. Finger. Wow. I feel yes. like eventually that bowl will be almost famous. Just... I mean, if a dog drank that, he'd probably get a fever, right? <laughs> Who's there? Whoa! Oh. Stand and unfold yourself. The water's talking. Tumbling. It is I, Usador. Usador? Yes, I have contacted you through the pool of water. You're coming from the puddle? Yes, that's me. And Arnold here is, and so is Chunt. Yeah, look down. Do you see a, Do you see like a puddle of mud near your feet or something? Oh, yes. That's us. We're the puddle of mud. Okay, let me distract the other guards. Okay. Hey, Marcellus, Barnardo, what's that over there? Is it something? Go look. He's good. He's very good. So wait, are we we're talking to, to Tom Blaine Belaroff, a.k.a. Tom the Traveler? Yes. We probably shouldn't say his name, his actual name over the c- communication, right? Okay, yeah. From now on, so that no one accidentally overhears, we won't mention the fact that he's really Tom Blaine Belleroth, son of Albane. Albane Belleroth, King of the North. We'll call him Yes, Hank. it is I, Hank, guard of the Dark Palace. Oh, he's, in, he's worked his way up to guard status. <laughs> so, so Hank, wh- what happens? Let me kneel, let me kneel beside you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Marcellus and Bernardo are going to look for a sound. And they're, they're going all the way down the hill to the Lava River. They're looking for the sound by the Lava River. Yes, but the Lava River is quite loud and hot. So they should be back in just a couple of minutes. Look, no, 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 it's going to take them a long time. Oh, oh, oh. I feel like a Lava River would be a great place for, like, a fight. Because if you got high ground, you could force your enemy down and then, like, burn off his arms and legs or something. Sure. Seems like a good idea. If I ever fight someone, I'm going to fight him near a lava river. Uh, uh, Tom Blaine, give us a report. What have you learned in your spying upon the Baron of Ragoon? I've come to be in the very center of Shrike, and I've learned some deadly things. The Dark Lord has many, many powers, and he List is six bent, of them. flying, no, one. one, eating very quickly, two, two. knew that one too. Uh, seeing through one wall, but the but can't see. So if you're in the next room, he can see you, but two rooms away, he can't. Three. Three. Oh, that's new. Um, the sonic levitating, mm, which four. is different different from flying, is a short levitation from which a sonic pulse comes out and it makes your ears bleed. Ooh. And um, mm. uh, burning things from the inside. Five. Five. 
so um, that one's quite 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 unfortunate to watch because someone uh, he'll be like you have displeased me and then um, you'll you'll think oh nothing's happening and you'll be like oh maybe he's not quite so powerful but what you don't see is they're starting to burn from the inside and then it gets really ugly I have Um, seen this one it is ugly for uh, the person afflicted with this Evil hex is uh, first like I'm just, oh I'm just so thirsty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so, oh, no. I just just get some water in here. Oh, it's like I just ate a pepper and then their entire body is engulfed in flame. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you're burning from the inside. And even people who've seen it before, they're thinking, oh, it can't happen to me, but it does. How many was that? Five, five, five. Oh yes, and um, the knowledge of true love. Oh, six. Oh, that's six. That's guy. That can't yeah. be evil. Yes. Well, but, but it's a terrible paradox because he can know it, but he can't have it. No. Oh. What could be more dangerous? No, it's the worst pain of all, and yeah. that's why he's the Dark Lord. Hank, what has it been like for you, infiltrating in Shrike and kind of like getting closer to Baron Ragoon and the Dark Lord? Well, I think I'm in a position maybe to clear up some misconceptions about the followers of the Dark Lord. Um... To be clear, the Dark Lord is pure evil. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think a lot of the elites in the Northeast uh, paint the followers of the Dark Lord with too broad of a brush. And really, for most people here um, in Shrike, it's about being really unhappy with the economy. And it's not all bad. There are definitely some bad people who support the Dark Lord. But I think if we really want to heal as a foon, we, we have to understand, and that's why I can recommend some books. What the Hell Happened to Shrike is a great one. Mm-hmm. Um, Shrike, Shrike Billy Elegy. Um, sort of getting inside the heads of people who sure. live in the dark countries, and they feel like leaders like my father have ignored them. And, you know, my father doesn't even visit Shrike. So, uh, uh, Tom Blaine. Yes. I, I'm sorry to use your real name, but... I fear I must be the bearer of bad tidings for oh, you. Does he not know? Your father, Albane, cannot visit, for he cannot visit anyone. He has sadly shuffled off this mortal coil. He dead. He dead. Does he, that make sense? He, 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 dead. he dead. He dead. A sentence too sad to contain a verb. He dead. <laughs> yes, I felt this in my heart as I have been called forth to the north to do the bat dance. And yet, some (laughs) questions remain. Of course. They say there have been rumors that he was killed. (laughs) Some foul murder has been committed on my father. Well, I don't know that anybody knows that it was murder. I think he probably just died of natural causes. And even if it was murder, it wasn't necessarily foul murder. It could have been... Like, could be like an accidental murder. It could be yeah. like, whoops, murder. Whoops. Yeah. Yeah. Whoops, murder. What have you heard? The, uh, I mean, it's not like there's a trickster god involved or anything. Yeah, I've heard it was definitely like not uh, r- accidentally reversing a curse on one person and killing an- another person. Don't tell me all the things it's not. We could be here forever. What have you heard that it might be? I cannot lie to you. You have pledged yourself to my inquest, and I must share the truth with you here. I am sorry, Arnold. I am sorry, you John. You can't lie to him. But a trickster god did trick us, the three of us, and in order to save Chunt's life, another life was lost. We knew not who it would be. And when the trickster god did cast his spell, Chunt was saved, and Albane's heart was broken in twain. Yeah, and I had, at the time, I had a caterpillar in my hand, and then my stick arm got turned into a real arm, and the caterpillar is still inside me, and sometimes it wakes me up in the morning. I just wanted you to know that as well. So think about that. So think about that. So you killed my father. <laughs> Not, no. Well, Arnie did. To be fair, Arnie Whoa, well, well, hold on. I said I didn't want to do it, and you said... Did you know that the Dark Lord has probed my soul to find out information about you, Arnor, and I have kept it from him? But now that I know you killed my dad... Oh, Tom... No, it was an accident. I didn't know. I had no idea what... Who, who, I had no idea who it was going to affect... I just thought I was saving Chunt. This is 
pretty shocking news to hear from a puddle in the middle of a lava castle. <laughs> Hank, yeah. Hank, listen yes. to me now. What? Do what? not be mad at Arnold. Why not? It's Arnie. Because the real problem was Dorian Deville. He is your enemy. I'm sorry, but that's not really easy for me to hear right now. I understand. Because I don't know if you've ever lost a parent to a trickster god's trick where someone anonymously kills someone but doesn't know who it is, but it still ends up being your dad. Because what people forget all the time when a trickster god comes to them and says, oh, I can solve one of your problems, but some random person is going to die, is that that is someone's dad or someone's mm-hmm. sister or someone's brother or someone's brother and their dad or someone's brother and their dad and also someone's son. People have different meanings to different people. Never thought about it like that. Now I feel terrible. Yeah. Everybody is somebody's sister and dad. Arnold definitely made the wrong choice on that day. I saved a child. I'm sorry. It was a it was an iffy ethical uh, quandary. Hey, so how you, can, how can but, so make you it up said there? that in that choice, the king of the badgers is more important than the king of the people. No. Oh, you didn't? Because I think you did, and that is racist. Is it? Well, is it, yeah, is, because you're wait. saying the king of one race is more important than the king of another race. But then he, that's the it, that's the definition of racism. It'd be racist either way then. Exactly. So don't make the choice. All right, fair enough. All choices are racist. <laughs> you spend too much time in Shrike, I think. It's terrible here. Did you know that I'm at the base of a large black mountain, and at the top of it there is a giant eye ringed with flame? Oh, gosh. Oh, that sounds yeah, terrible. And that, and that eye stands for I'm watching you. Wait, the letter I. Oh, it's the letter I. Yeah, but you. But it's well known what it stands for, oh, and yes. it stands for, I'm watching you. I am and watching you. It could really. So stand when for you any see that I, it's really intimidating because it's a reminder. Because you look up and you think, what was that? And, oh yeah, it stands for I'm watching you. Could be ice cream. I've heard that. Uh, I, d- I doubt it's ice cream. Arnie starts with an I. I've heard um, Hank, and I don't know if this is true or not. I heard that. The Dark Lord in, in certain areas of the country, probably in Shrike, um, has been uh, sending a lot of decrees. Like whenever he feels something, he just immediately sends out a decree through a bird. No, yeah. I mean, he's crazy. He's pure evil. Okay. But the problem right now is the electrical college. The, the what's this now? It's an electrical the, college. The electrical college. And that's how he maintains his legitimacy. Because if you disagree with him... He sends you to a college where you get electrocuted. Mm. Oh, terrible. It must be our turn. Why do you have this electro... This is the, the problem is, now you... Just because someone that you don't like is taking over Foon, you can't then retroactively say, oh, I don't like the electrical college because it's served us a lot in the past when there were kings that people didn't like and we just electrocuted people <laughs> to like them. I, I never cared Wait, for what? It. Wait, what? I don't know that I agree necessarily with what Tom Blaine is saying, but it is true. The electrical college does electrocute people the best way you can. I'm staring into a puddle in the middle of a lava castle and you've just killed my father... And, and what am I supposed it's to do? It's been a little while. It's been a while. It happened a while. Oh, so you just bothered to call just now? Oh, we should have called. I didn't know it was an option. I have good news, too, Tom Blaine. My mother's dead, too? No, 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 no. All right. Here's what you're going to do. When I'm done talking to you, smash your foot in the puddle so it, all the water is, is splashed out of there. And then run inside the castle and find the nearest basin filled with water, and I'll call you back. Uh, that way, at least what? you're not talking into a puddle. Okay. Hold on one second. Also, Hank, real quick. Yeah. Um, if you're able to, just because, you know, if they have any sort of major wizard that might be able to trace this call, if you're able to, can you 69 with someone underneath a star? I think that will prevent the mages from being able to track our call. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've got someone in mind. Okay. <laughs> How long is that going to take? Well, we'll take a break and then call you right back. Sounds perfect. Here goes All my right. foot. Well, after these messages, we'll be right back. Fly, you fools! Over to patreon.com slash magic tavern right now and become a patron of the show. For only $5 a month, you get access to all of our wonderful bonus content and material and ad-free versions of the show. So, Usador, we gotta get back in touch with 
with Tom Blaine and yes. Shrek. He seems, I feel really bad. He seems upset. Well, he, we did sort of kill his father. But also don't feel too bad. He's Right now he's 69ing under the stars. I suppose that's true. Yeah, let me... Well, I love this water cadence. Oh, God. 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 Yes. Wait, is it still happening? Yes. Uh, Tom Blaine. Wait, call back, call back, call back. <laughs> All right, well, we'll give him a second here. Are you excited, Arnold, for the quest? Your first quest and most important quest? You know what? I'm, yeah, I am. I'm excited to get out of this tavern, to get out of Hog's Face, see a little bit more of of Foon, and and go off and defeat the Dark Lord. You know, how long could that take? You like know, a couple of weeks, a months, months. Uh, yeah, maybe six months, two years, somewhere in that two years, somewhere in that range. Now, here's the thing: we Do you think, think a quest could sustain for two years? Probably not. I'd tune out. All right, let's get in touch with yeah, the top back. Touch this one. Yeah. Really Hello? Good. Who's that? Tom Blaine. Hello? Are, which one of your three identities are you right now? I am still Hank. Oh, okay. Okay, good. How are your other personalities fitting in in Shrike? Well, everyone knows me as one of three people. A Hank, um, D'Angelo Capricious, and one more. Grumblewald Schimberschwitz. Exactly. That way I can be three different guards at the palace. They're all guards? They're all guards. Because as an actor, it's very difficult to switch. Well, uh, should is one like the the main guard or like the point guard? Like, couldn't the other two, like, one be a forward and one be, like, the center of attention or something? One could be overly well, forward and one could be the center of attention? Well, we numbers. Okay. One, two, and three. Oh, so a two guard and a three guard. A two guard, a three guard. Yeah. yeah. I have to be very careful. Because I am in the Dark Lord's bathroom. What? what? Describe it. What? Describe it. Why did you go in there? Wait, is it a wall he it can see through? It was the first place I could find after my 69 under the stars. Now, far be it from me to criticize. But three guards, really? Three guards? Yeah, you could have different jobs as different people and find out different things. The whole point of you going there was to be a spy. Are you, are you at least three guards in, like, different aspects of the tower? Let me tell you something about acting. When you get into a role and you do research on that role, it's very difficult. Find me an actor, okay, who at the same time plays the father of a family, the mother of a family, all the different children in that family. That's nutty. Edmund Murfiano does it all the time. Oh, uh, yeah. Now he is good. Yes. He's very, he's very good. Yeah, he does that one, I am my own husband, I am my own daughter, I am my own son. No, you're right. But I, I've seen many things here, and I think I can provide valuable information. Oh, yes. Yeah, what's some of the information that we could use on our quest against the Dark Lord? Because we're going to leave in, like, five weeks. Five weeks, we're going to head out. By the way, just really quickly, because I just did a 69, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's been a long time since I've done one. Yeah. Because you, you would think that that's something that you would do all the time. And then you're like, eh. Because it's not as good as it should be. Sure. On, on paper, the idea is that, like, you're getting the best of everything. But it's either hard to focus on what you're doing or hard to feel what's being done. That's very true. It can be distracting. The first time you hear about it, you're like, this is all I'm going to be doing from here on out. And I think as you get older, you're sort of like, eh. Yes, I'd rather just do some 66-ing. <laughs> Wait, what 66-ing? What do you think? Or a 34. Oh my gosh, a 34? No, that, 34. that gets me going. Now I'm... Oh. Fucking a chair? What? What? Now, Tom Blaine, uh, yes. what, what, what information have you found out that you can share with us before we set out on the quest five weeks from now? I feel that you may be able to buy yourself some time as the goblin army stands between the Dark Lord and the North. If the goblins should fall. The That's Dark right. Lord is... I view, I view him as unstoppable right now. I, I want to paint a bright picture. I want to say that things are good, but they 
are not. I think we are living in an unprecedented time of evil. And that is real talk. So I think pet things are worse than they've ever been in our lifetime. That sucks. Yeah, there's not much to do about it other than to realize how bad that it sucks and know that it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Would it be helpful but, if all of us tried to, like, not go to sleep for a long time, like just stay awake for a long time? Would that be helpful? I think you've got to stay woke. I don't think you have a choice. Yes. And But Arno, I it's want right. you to know that he is focused on you. Yeah. Why why is he so focused on me? He screams out your name. Ooh. And then fire shoots out from somewhere. Was he 69ing before he yelled out the name? Or 34 I don't ever get a good look at him. Uh-huh. Um and honestly, it's scarier that way. Oh yes. Because yes. you would think, "Oh, I'm going to show you the worst thing that you've ever seen is the dark lord." But I So wait, have you don't. never actually looked at him directly? No. Oh, and don't think for a second that he doesn't know that. He's using that. He knows that if he seems mysterious and hard to see and you can't look directly at him or you can't say his name or any of that crap, that that then, oh, he's so scary and bad when he's really just a giant man with 12 fingers and seven faces. <laughs> seven faces? This is the first I've heard about this. He's got seven faces? I, I, probably, somewhere. We didn't tell you he has seven faces? Somewhere. The fact is that... If I were to look directly at the Dark Lord and just look and stare at him, I am worried about the CGI. What the? Mm. Wait, what's, what's... So am I. What's the CGI? Cranial grade insanity. And that is when you look at something so terrifying that it it's insanity of the... You know there are different grades of insanity. Temporary mm-hmm. sexual like insanity. Temporary sexual insanity... Um, insanity of the leg, which is like blamed for most bad dancing. Yes. Um, there's like torso insanity, and then there's cranial grade insanity, which makes you act crazy. Yeah. So oftentimes, when you look at a monster directly, you perceive the CGI. Mm. Have you noticed if you encounter a monster, oftentimes you you look at it like quickly from the side or you're, it, it's like a, you're moving quickly and then you pass it. Uh, that's because your brain can't handle the CGI. And if you were to look at it, uh, cranial grade insanity would take hold and it would almost look fake. You look at a creature too long, you're like, it's just too much CGI. Yeah, it's uncanny. Yes, yes, exactly. No, exactly. So that's why oftentimes if you're involved in some kind of altercation with a monster, it's very scary at first, very scary at first, and then all of a sudden you get a good look and CGI and then you're feeling bad. That's because yeah. you're insane. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but Tom, we need as much intel as we can get from you. I don't know how long the, the, this water communication is going to stay open. Tell us everything you found out. What is this bathroom like? What stuff is in the bathroom? If you open up the cabinets, what stuff is in his bathroom cabinets? Ooh, yeah. What does his there, poop look like? There are no lights in the bathroom. There are bats that look like people and people that look like bats. It's very confusing. Oh, and there, aren't, and, there aren't any about right now. In his bathroom? Yes. They hang upside down from the ceiling. Which ones? The people. <laughs> Wait, are you sure you're not in his bat room? <laughs> No, that's a different room, okay. and that's terrifying. No, it's it's awful down here, but I think you have to understand that people here are really struggling, and that's why they're supporting the Dark Lord. I want to work and help to set them free. They're just people who have problems, and therefore they are willing to overlook pure evil. Yes, we must not err look over pure evil. For evil doth happen when good men and women and dwarves and elves stand up and do nothing, which is why we are leaving very soon. Thank you, Tom Blaine, for this critical information, and we shall work to keep the goblins and the Dark Lords working each other as we work towards the Dark Lord ourselves. If they are embroiled in combat, they shall not pay as much attention to us, (laughs) I think. But I need one more thing from you. Hank. Yes. Tom Blaine. Well, yes. D'Angelo. Dan, 
Would you like capricious? Grumblewald yes. Schwimberschmitz. Grumblewald yes. Schwimberschmitz. Yes. yes. I need one of your personalities, one of the characters you've put on. Yes. To become the new Baroness of Shrike. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, you could be two guards and a baroness, or even, you know, one man and two governors. We need someone closer to the baron who can give us critical information about the Dark Lord's next moves. But the baron is already married. Yes, I know what I'm asking you to do. <gasps> Kill the baron's wife and marry him? Yes. This is an actor's dream. <laughs> I'll do it. Thank you. And Thank Hank, you know, know that even though you may not be nominated because this is real life and not the stage, you have won the tosser of our hearts. I would like to toss one off for you. Let's all toss one off for Hank. All done. Are you done? Okay. I think I hear someone coming. Oh, Hank, also. No, that's not, if, what, we, that's not what we meant. <laughs> Hank, also, if you ever get in trouble, know that I have a friend in Shrike, okay? His name is Shrike Jones, and if you ever need help, he will do the right thing. Shrike Jones? Is uh, are you sure that's who you mean? Yes, Shrike Jones, and he will do the yeah. right thing if you need him, if you need any help. I thought yes. you were talking about Shrike Lee. Wait, hold on. It is Shrike Lee. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it would Shri- make more sense for Shrike yes. Lee. To do oh, right. it is Shrike Lee. Man, I always get those two Shrike confused. Shrike Lee is the son of Sam. They make very similar words. Yes, Sam and his da- is his dad. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Before, before I go, there are four things you must know. Four things. And these are the four most important things I've learned here. List four of them. If you are going to survive, you must know these four things. <laughs> Just a minute! Um, okay. I need to quickly... Oh, oh God. No, just give, it, give us the four things. What, what is that noise? Just do, at least do one of them. First thing. Oh, God! Oh, God! Tom! No! Hank! Why is the basin water so still again? I think he's gone. I hope he's all right. I hope so, too. And I just realized I never gave him this card. One of our listeners sent it through the portal, this condolence card to Tom. In the loss of your father, Tom, though there's so little one can do or say, may it help to know that others care and deepest sympathy. At least your father died peacefully and in no way was murdered by a curse placed on the king of the badgers being transferred to him, Shelby. Here, I'll just drop this in this basin of water. He'll get it. That was nice. Oh, it got all wet. Oh. Gosh, I hope he's okay. I guess we should... Should we still do emails? Sure, I'll just... Why don't you start reading emails, and I'll just... I'll check with all the water and shrike. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I got this email. Uh, to Magic Tavern. This is... This is... <laughs> is that... Do you need to do that to yes. check? Yes. Okay. All right, I have this email. Uh, it says, uh, Hello... For over a year, my personal email, chunt with six T's, spelled the number six, T-E-E-S, at gmail.com, has been spammed with questions about wizards, buttholes, and animal sex. I recently replied to many of these senders, asking why on earth they've insisted on harassing me in such a strange and unrelenting manner. After all, I've been made fun of for wearing six T's, T-E-E-S, at a time before, but this is a whole new level of badgering. Not all replied, but those who did inform me that someone named Arnold, it's Arnie, at this email address has been commanding them to write me. Kayada's up with that. Sincerely, M. Chunt Kayada. P.S. Since this whole thing began, I've been setting up account filters to fight the spam. So far, I've knocked out about 70% using the following list. If you won't stop telling people to bother me, perhaps you can give me a few suggestions for the filter. Here's what I've got so far. Chunt, Chunty, Baby, badger, animal sex, butthole, two buttholes, three buttholes, four buttholes, five buttholes. I really hate that Arnie guy. And will you marry me? What spam? Did he mean to say ham? I, I think someone has a very similar email address to yours, Chunt. Your, your huh. email is Chunt with six T's uh-huh. at, gmail. at gmail.com. This person has Chunt with six, the number six, T E E S at gmail.com. Huh. Well, it's funny you say that. I have a. Uh, uh, Tom Blaine is coming through. I can sense oh. him here. I am no longer Hank. Oh, what? I am Who is this? The future Baroness. Oh, oh okay. my gosh. All right. Are you okay? What happened? I was discovered by some other guards, and apparently we're not supposed to use the Dark Lord's bathroom, and there's mm-hmm. a sign that I ignored. Oh. Are you all right? I was lashed. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. That 
That sucks. That does. That, that really sucks. Yes, and now I have to put on lashes so that I can become a Baroness. How ironic. But can you recognize how I've changed my voice? Well, that's, I was so confused because I knew I was calling Tom Blaine, and then when you answered, I thought it was a beautiful woman. That really sounds the same Can you hear the way that there's a slight echo in my voice now? Oh, yes, yes. No. It's delightful, very charming. I added that. Beautiful. To be the, to be the echo of my vagina. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I picked up on that. No, what? I did. Wow. Do you notice how that you can? That's how you can sort of tell gender from a vagina echo. Yes, of course. Do you think sound works the same way on all genitals? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> That'd be foolish. That's one of the first things you learn as an actor is how to change your voice for the wide spectrum of genitals that you might have. What are some? What are some of the other ones? Well, on one end of the spectrum is sort of like penis. Mm-hmm. On the other end of the spectrum is vagina and then there's all sorts of things in between like a blaze a wormple oh oh uh, yeah a horse oh. cock <laughs> there's a horse cock I think wormples are kind of hot yeah they're not bad I actually just saw one close up in 69 <laughs> congratulations that that sucks that no that, that in a good way yeah Yeah. oh no yeah it does oh. it does top play Though we're very proud of you taking on this great duty of marrying the Baron in disguise. We're in the middle of reading emails. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, Chunt, you said you had an email? Yeah, I have an email here. This is uh, from Chunt with 60s, 60S. Uh, Oh, yeah, babies. Uh, Okay, I tried Chunt with 60s, Chunt with 60s, Chunt with 60s. These all sound the same when you read them. And all of them were taken on gmail.com. Either you or some Maniac fans are very thorough, but not thorough enough. So are these accounts all controlled by one guy, the original, or are we all just equally nuts for the show? Love, John, and Mini Apolis. Huh. So, Chun, do you have more Why than is there a polis so small? Yeah, why not get a larger Apolis? I, I don't know. Hmm. So, Chun, do you have more than one email address as Chun with six T's? No, just have the one. You just have the one. So there are a bunch of other people have made similar email accounts? Wow, you're a real fucking sleuth. <laughs> but there's just there's just one real genuine Chun. All right. And so, you can also find me on Instagram at Chunt Baby. That's B-A-B-Y. So there's no real question here. We're just reading that this happened. Pretty much. Yep. Okay, much. great. Uh, well, I have one more email here that I'll read. This is, uh, of course, as we mentioned, to Chunt with 6 T's at gmail.com. Uh, not to be confused with Chunt with 6 T's. Uh, this is from Mia Bender. She writes, Hey, Arnie, Chunt, Usador, and any guests. I'm a huge fan of the show, and I have to say one of my favorite guests is Tom Blaine Belleroth. Oh. I know he's in Shrike, but I miss him. Any word on when Tom will be back on the po- podcast? Uh, Mia. Right now. Oh, tell her I'm back right now. <laughs> Mia. Mia, are you listening? He's on the podcast right now. But so, I'm sort of, because I'm not actually in a magic tavern. But Wait. I am in a, I'm talking to some water. Can, can I try something real quick? Can I, um, can I talk to Tom Blaine Belleroth? Yes. Can I talk to Hank? <clears throat> yes. Can I talk to the Baroness? <clears throat> yes. That echo. You hear it? Yeah. You, hear it? you hear the I vagina echo? It. I can kind of hear it now. Yeah. Oh, wait. The portal is closing. Oh. I have to just tell you four quick things. Oh, yeah, no, wait, yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, yeah. Why did we not? Why did we spend all that time in the emails? You have four important things to tell us. Oh, he's gone. Oh, man. Mm. I feel bad for the guy because his dad, you know. Yeah. He dead. He dead. He dead. But you know what? We're going to fight the Dark Lord. Boys year. Boys year. Boys year. Also, I don't think he really had four things. Right? He would have told us. He had a lot of opportunities to tell us those four things. So Shrike Jones was son of Sam? Oh, Shrike Lee. (laughs) Oh, boy. What about Bill Paxton and Bill Pullman? (laughs) 
What about Bill Paxton and Bill Pullman? You can find them both in 1990's Brain Dead, a film which never garnered much audience approval, which brings us back to this podcast, none of which really happened. Usador the Lighter Blue was played by Matt Young, who, until he learns breath control, will just keep 34-ing his voiceover prospects. Shunt the Shapeshifter was played by Adol Refai, with real... Well, you could hear him, that's something. Tom Blaine Belleroth was played by special guest Steve Waltine. Steve performs with the Improvised Shakespeare Company and is a writer for Jon Stewart's upcoming HBO project. And I just know his old colleagues with mostly this podcast as their comedy lifeline were thrilled to have him back. Craig, it's time for more of that serviceable, no other options magic you bring to the table. I'm going to further investigate last week's cross-dimensional cataclysm, a staggering amount of matter swapped places. It's like we know something terrible happened but can't zero Zero in on the reasons why. Remind you of any elections? Hello from the Magic Tavern was produced by Arnie Niekamp, Evan Chikover, and Ryan D. Georgie. This one edited by Ryan D. Georgie. Music by Andy Poland. Logo by Allard Lebon. Additional audio effects by Jason Knox. Production assistance by Garrett Schultz. Visit us at HelloFromTheMagicTavern.com or on Facebook or Twitter. Special thanks go out to David Herman for the remote assistance helping us record Steve Waltine from Earwolf's New York studio. And as always, thanks to the Chicago Podcast Co-op and Earwolf. Don't forget the spinoff podcast Offices and Bosses is out now. Episode 1 is out, and episode 2 comes out Wednesday the 18th of January, which uh, might already be now, depending on when you're listening to this. When are you listening to this? Are you in the future? Just listen to the show. You're going to like it. And to prove that you might like it, I'm going to play a chunk of the first episode for you right now. Um, It's going to be... Where is it? Ah, here we go. So sit back, listen, enjoy... And see what you're missing if you don't have a HAL subscription. Oh. Fear not, marketing manager, IT professional, sales rep, and temp. I am office manager, your guide in the realm of offices and bosses. Welcome to Offices and Bosses, a mini-series spin-off of Hello from the Magic Tavern. If you've never listened to Hello from the Magic Tavern, this is what you need to know. About a year and nine months ago, I Why are you through- doing this? Well, Nobody said- needs to know the backstory of Magic Tavern. They're listening to us play a game. Well, I know. Look, this is a podcast where we play the game Offices and Bosses, but I think people maybe need to know some context. About a year and nine months ago, I fell through a dimensional <sighs> portal behind a Burger King into the magical, fantastical land of food. No, no. We don't need to know that. We're just going to play a game. Oh, all right, well, look. Game night. Game night. Game night. All right, fine. Look, I'm Arnie. I'm a human. I'm from I'm from Earth. And I am Usador, wizard of the twelfth realm of Ephesius, master of light and shadow, manipulator of magical delights, devourer of chaos, champion of the great halls of Trachus. The elves know me as Fiang Yalak. Thank the you. dwarves know me as Zonin and Hookstangis. And I am known in the northeast as Gaswanius Maystar. But when I play offices and bosses, I'm known as... John Bastion. That's right. And I'm Chunt the Shapeshifter, King of the Badgers. And when I play Offices and Bosses, I'm Dan Smith. Wait, let me find the right... Uh, how did I sound before? Here's um, here's my regular voice. Here's Dan Smith. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> and I'm a temp. I'm a temp, baby. Chunt, you're a master of voices. Yes, I'm trying to uh, really uh, get into the game. Okay, so apparently on Foon, it's a very popular role-playing game. Well, you know, I don't think I could explain it very well. Why don't we let our our leader of the game explain it. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm the uh, Metamore. Yeah. Here a lot. Not going to lie. Here at the bar a lot. In the tavern all the time. And uh, playing this game and whatnot. And, uh, well, it's... it's, uh, Glad to bring you along, uh, Arnie, and whatnot. I'm sorry your character died. Yeah, my character, Ryan DeGiorgi, the son of the boss, died last time we played off. Oh, man, how did it die? Well, you know, Dan Smith stabbed him in the face. Oh, man. As Chunt, I apologize for that. As Dan Smith, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, those things happen. In the world of offices and bosses, you know, those things will happen in this fant- fantastical, mysterious world. Oh, wonderful. With buildings over a hundred stories. Oh. So we're excited. You have a new character. You've rolled up a new character, I see. Yeah, well, you know, it's a little... Un- I want to play this game with you guys, but, you know, I want something that's sort of more exciting for me. So, Sean, I know you're Dan Smith. Attempt? Attempt? I'm a I'm a temp, yes, a temporary so a temporary employee. It's and uh, and Usador, you're John Sebastian. John Bastian. John Bastian. A marketing manager. A marketing manager. With a fedora. And I will be playing an elf from another world 
who fell through a dimensional portal behind a blacksmith shop into the mundane normal shoppy? world. We're just going to let shoppy of slide? Offices and bosses. Luckily, uh, sure. I'm still getting a slight Wi-Fi signal uh, okay. from uh, the shoppy. Um, right, well, you know, we can, we'll can we make that work, maybe. We'll Great. see. Uh, you have a, a name for your character? Yes. Orlando Bloom. Mm, at least uh, the name is weird enough. Uh, aren't you going to ask me what a fedora is? It's kind of hat. <laughs> and we also have a... Uh, another guest playing with us. My name is I, Flower, and uh, I'm just, I'm honestly, like, I don't do a lot of stuff like this, and this yeah. is very exciting to me. I just, oh, Flower, you're, you're in for a treat. This is a wonderful game that you can really delve into and lose yourself in this wonderful, fantastical world that Metamore is about to take us through. Normally, <laughs> like, I'm all about, like, pounding nerds, but this seems oh, like fun. Oh. Uh, flowers in the world of offices and bosses don't actually speak. I know it's strange, and we don't think they have feelings, but if they don't speak, so we don't know. Right, that's why my character is not a flower. My character, oh. my character's name is Gail Davidson Durst. <laughs> Gail Davidson Bush? Durst. 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 D-U-R-S-T. It's hyphenated. Gail sure. Davidson Durst, and I am on the IT team. Ah, okay, great. Excellent. Well, I'm sure many of your... Technology skills will come in handy. Yep. Is everybody prepared? Yes. Are we ready? So. Oh, very good. Holy shit. You have my bow. Okay, you're yeah, the one who that. that. Ax that whole voice, that whole name. What? Just knock it off. You have my bow. I'm getting into my character. Uh, well, um, you find yourselves in a uh, conference room uh, in a large office building. And uh, wow. you have received a message that the Q4 numbers are due. So you must go around the office and find uh, the f- keepers of the, of the various numbers uh, so you can compile the statistics for the uh, quarterly report for the all-important fourth quarter. You must find Carl, Steve, Diane, and Kelly. Carl, Steve, Diane, and Kelly. Yes, yes. What, what strange names are these? And his Q4 numbers are due by EOB today. So, Ooh. EOB means end of business. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. Okay, thanks. Well, uh, I look around the conference room. Do the voice. Oh, uh, I want to look around the conference room and see if I notice any of the numbers or runes that I need to find for the Q4 uh, report. That's great. Uh, and as a marketing manager, you are... Do you would you like to use your uh, uh, keen awareness in? in uh, I'm going to use my dexterity and see if flipping around the room will actually help. Great, great. Just roll a die there. Okay, there you go. Okay, yes. Seven. By the telephone, which is a magical communication device, you oh. notice a company uh, roster uh, oh. listing a phone tree, and on that phone tree you find Carl, Steve, Diane, and Kelly, oh. and where their desks are. Oh, excellent. Uh, can I uh, examine this phone tree uh, to bleh, to decide uh, which one is closest to go to first? It appears Carl is closest. All right. I, I examine the phone tree for fruit or berries. It appears someone has spilled coffee on it, but there are no fruits or berries I on the phone. I dated a tree one time. Oh, really? Yeah, it didn't last very long. Mm. There's and, a lot to take in. And is this flower talking or Gail Davidson? <laughs> no, that was, I'm not good at this game. I just like made me yeah. think of Gail. No, Gail. I'm when you Gail. say a lot to take in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. A tree would be a lot to take in. You are a rude person, Arnold. The That's size a, of that pollen is not an appropriate it up. question. No, I brought it up. I wanted, clearly wanted to talk about <laughs> yes. it. Uh, no, Gail, Gail Davidson Durst here. And um, I sent out a company email. Uh, noticing that there was coffee spilled on the uh, phone tree. Um, Dan Smith, the temp, realizes I should probably make coffee for everyone. So I find a little pod that I put into a machine and I press it and the coffee is made just like that. Okay, as a temp, you do specialize in random tasks. Oh, beautiful, so beautiful. Roll that die roll fast. Oh, of we'll, course, we'll yes. A, I said just like that, but I should roll for it. Here yeah, we go. We got a plus four. And, on that. All right, so that's going to be a 14. 14. Okay, it's okay, coffee. Oh, I'm so drawn in. What will happen next? Go to howl.fm slash magic, sign up, and find out. In fact, I'm going to go do that myself. They didn't even give me a free code. You would think that I was important enough, but nobody ever remembers Craig. Maybe I should get Craig cast on Howl. Howl. 
Hey, thank you for listening to Hello from the Magic Tavern. A great way to support the podcast is to join our Patreon. You'll get ad-free versions of our entire back catalog, including all the Magic Tavern spinoffs like Offices and Bosses, I Am Spin Tax, Shadow Sit, there are a lot of them. There are two new exclusive bonus episodes every month, Discord, all kinds of stuff. To get more information, go to patreon.com slash magic tavern. That's patreon.com slash magic tavern.